everyone, it's episode 370 of This Is Whole Life. This is a special Sabbath edition, even though you wouldn't know it unless I told you, because, well, it's a podcast and you have no You're idea. You're listening to it on... You're listening to it on Wednesday or yeah, Thursday. Yeah, you just, or... you're just, you know, this is probably for Nata- for Uncle Nate. This is your drive to work post uh, uh, Fourth of July. So we're hoping to give you a full full episode today on your trip. Are we going to bring back Uncle Nate every year? Is that is I, that because this is two years in a row? Right? I, I, I love. I, I think it's it might become a tradition. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see next year. I'm down no, for. I was like, good. you didn't come in the full regalia today, and he's like, well, I. Nobody told me to. I mean, I if nobody knows what we're talking about, uh, Nathaniel did our announcements dressed as Uncle Sam slash Nate. <laughs> yeah. uh, so and it was pretty fantastic. Epic beard and all, and, yeah. and just nobody laughs like Uncle Nate. So, you That's know, you, you can't help but be fully involved. No one hits home. a high note like him. Either. Yeah, that was <laughs> actually quite That's, impressive. No, it was <laughs> impressive. I'll give, him, I'll give him props for going for it right I'll there. I'll tell you what else was impressive was the uh, great job Stanley did putting together our 4th of July tribute with the staff. I was, that was pretty nice. good. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. I especially enjoyed the end. Me of it. too. I thought that I was pretty. The end. Yeah, the end was great. And then the little tooth shine. <laughs> yeah. For, for, uh, <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about? Just go back and watch the service. We're not going to tell you more. Yeah, about it. Oh wait, Stanley added that. The little tooth sparkle I say, thing? I don't know. I, don't, but... I thought that was just Albert. Yeah, no, I think that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see that all the time, don't you? Yeah, all the yeah. time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> okay, so just for transparency's sake today, you know, in case you maybe you're just joining us or you haven't uh, you haven't been here before, on This Is Whole Life, we uh, tackle the subjects that we talk about each and every week here at the Whole Life Church in Orlando, and we have... Um, we attempt to tackle them. Well, we attempt. Yeah. I think we do. I think we do a pretty good job. We are overcomers, we... Jeff. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and today we have a special guest. Ken, to your right, would you like to do the honors of just saying that you know they're just sitting in, but you know that they're I here. I have my fantastic, talented, wonderful, amazing daughter Kyla, seen to my mm, right. Great cause... song. So too, and and so what it, for what it's worth for you, I want you to know that that Kyla is suffering for your podcast today because she and our other guest. <laughs> She's supposed to be eating right now. Yeah, like it's <laughs> it's uh, two fifteen, and yeah. we're we, we're just we getting started. Got, yeah, we, we're just getting started, and um, well, I was gonna listen to the podcast anyways. So, so Kyla, Kyla, this is this is a time saver for Kyla. Yeah, uh, actually, I've actually been surprised. So my nineteen year old daughter will often tell me what was happening on the podcast. So I have to be careful of the stories I tell about her. I told her yeah. once a story on her. She's like, I listened to that, Dad. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. She's like, no, I like that. So okay. And then, well, uh, Mrs. Bachman, would you like oh. to introduce our sit-in guest to your left? Well, yes. I'm not sure what to call him, though. I mean, I, I know yep. to call <laughs> yeah, him do. my husband, but uh, he he's the, the artist formerly known as Nashville Tim. Or Ganashville Tim. Or Ganashville, Ganashville Tim. Tim. Speaking of new names... Yeah, tell us. And I think I, he's been trying out a new one for the last few He's so. trying out a new one. Do you want me to say it or do you want to you say go it? Ahead. Okay. What do you think of Orlando Lorian? No, it's. Oh, see, I messed <laughs> it up. He's going to do, do it. it right, Melanie. It's the Orlando Lorian. Oh, oh, the Orlando oh, Lorian. It's like the Ohio State. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's, okay. and, then, and then full stop. Yeah. After that, you know, there's nothing else needed. I don't know. I think it has a ring to it. I like it. I, like I it. do. I can deal with it. Yeah. yeah. So now when you join us on Most Saturday importantly, mornings. importantly, it's important for me to know where the questions are coming from <laughs> so that I can. <laughs> yeah. Just so, just so that we know who we're dealing with. So this week, as we already talked about, it, we started a new series based on the Chosen TV series. So I'm just going to put this out there to start. Hashtag spoiler alert. If you have not watched this show, which I spoke to numerous people today at Second Service who had never watched the Very show. serious, really? Yes. Oh. So. Oh, wow. They are going, they're like, well, how many seasons are there? And I'm Three like, Three so far. And they're like, well, did one of your episodes get picked as the favorite? I'm like, actually, it did. Mm-hmm. He's like, what season is that? I'm like, season three, episode two. Which is second to last, you so can't it's going to be a while. Ahead. Don't skip but ahead. But I'm like, you're going to have to <laughs> no. So I'm like, you better get yeah, going because you've exactly. got some work to do mm-hmm. before we move on. So if you Sounds like are a good uh, Sabbath afternoon project to me, you know, or you know, yeah. I Can mean, you tell them how to get to them? If you go to season one, is I think it's on Netflix. Season one is. Oh, is it? Is it yeah. still on Netflix? It is. It's. Yeah. Uh, I think you can find it on Prime yeah. as well. Uh, Amazon yeah. Prime. I actually have uh, this week just. Uh, sending clips to Melanie. I went on YouTube 
man. <laughs> yeah. And one of the fun things about YouTube is that Dallas Jenkins, the creator of the series, actually gives you a little commentary before and after. Mm -hmm. on, and you on can either love or hate that. That's usually, that's the thing. <laughs> but you where, can fast forward. Yeah, you can fast forward. I that. like Dallas. I, I feel I like he's too. a kindred spirit <laughs> when it comes to talking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, like, yeah, it's definitely a... Uh, and let me tell you, you want to know how cool a guy Dallas Jenkins is? I want to know. I want to tell you. Okay. When he first started the series, somebody told me about it, it was, I think, during the pandemic. And I saw I saw an episode, and I really wanted to use a clip. And so I, I tracked down his production company and sent a, uh, a message and said, hey, I'd like to use a clip from the show. Would you be okay with that? And I got back at just the nicest email and said, hey, yeah, absolutely. You're more than welcome to use it. Don't need to pay us anything, but if you would just just mention to people how to find it and where where it is, we'd appreciate that. And if there's anything else you can ever we can do for, it, let me know. And I was like, well, there is something else. <laughs> how about uh, how about Dallas uh, giving uh, telling you know doing a little intro for us? And so Dallas Jenkins recorded no way an intro for mm -hmm. the Madison Campus Church. And not only did That's he record cool. it, he uh, sent me an email. Says, "Is there anything special you want me to say?" So I told him what our mission statement was and what we were about. And he he included he worked that into his little message. And it's still on Facebook if you okay. search hard enough to find it, Madison Campus Church. So, but I just tell that story because I uh, he has a special place in my heart. Not a lot of people who produce stuff will go out of their way like that mm -hmm. to to yeah. just do something yeah. nice like that. So, Dallas Jenkins, if you're listening. I think you're pretty cool. Yeah. Well, and the other way, you can do it on you can do it on YouTube. You if you're YouTube proficient, you shouldn't have any trouble. But I have had people be like, Hey, it's hard to find the actual full episodes. And then there's you can a lot of to, snippets. Isn't it Angel Studios? Isn't that the, uh, that's, the app? To me, that's worse. That's even harder to work through sometimes, okay. especially if you're trying to project it onto your TV, like with Apple TV or Roku. The easiest way I found is the chosen TV. Okay. It is uh, if you have a laptop and an HDMI cable that you plug in. That's if you're not going to watch it like on a smart TV. That's one of the easiest ways, or your laptop or your device. And it's it, I've found that the actual quality of the stream is probably as good as it gets. It's probably worth just taking a second, just because we are we are using uh, clips during this series, and and they're you know like I said, I don't think there's any issue with any of that, but. Um, one of the ways that they've funded this is very different than the way, you know, normally if you're doing a TV show, so you go raise money by finding people who have money to, to make it happen. And they've kind of crowdsourced this is kind of the way they've been doing it. And so you still have the opportunity to help fund uh, the seasons that they're doing. And so I, I just encourage you really support them. They, they do good stuff and they're, they're worth there's you know, opportunities everywhere. Yeah. If you buy if you buy any of their swag, it, it goes towards Which, that. Uh, there's at least two of us oh, that, are yeah. that are wearing uh, <laughs> chosen socks. Me and Tim. Yeah. If I wore socks, I would want socks like that. I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't wear socks. That's. I it. don't know if you want to visualize it or not, but Randy doesn't wear any shoes yeah. or no, socks not, right now in here. No. And uh, we did foot washing today. How long is this show, by the way? I don't know. It's <laughs> long. Um, but also, you can give DVDs to people if you know. We've done a couple yeah. different things. Bought some T-shirts, and it all yep. goes to support and let other people. See See it. And the goal is one billion people to have viewed all the episode, or at least an episode of the show, is the total. So yeah, I was gonna say if you if you're old school like the Orlandalorian, <laughs> you can also if you want to watch it, you can order order the DVD set. I will have to say the Orlando <laughs> the Orlandalorian also has a pretty impressive DVD collection. Yes, How many are we up to now, Tim? One thousand five hundred and sixty three. All right, one thousand five hundred sixty-three. That's mm -hmm. nice. One thousand five hundred sixty-three. That's pretty good. That's Does pretty that include good. the chosen DVDs or? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. that's. Mm -hmm. We'll see. There we go. All alphabetized and everything. Yes, All right. they are. As we jump into today's message, I want to just quickly say that every week, if we find out whose favorite episode it was that we're doing, to have a few words. Now, we probably won't make them come by for the podcast, but we could get a little recorded idea of what that was. So, but Melanie, this was your favorite episode. Well. Randy. What? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it, it was not my favorite episode. That's what it said in the paragraphs. It says Melanie's fave, but actually what happened was Jeff stole mine. What? And I'm I had to choose my the bus second for nothing favorite. that I did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you Melanie, had... Melanie and Jeff have the same favorite, <laughs> so I told Melanie she now has a new favorite. It's going to be episode one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, I really did love this episode, though. Yeah. It, it is one of my favorites. So I'm I'm just teasing Jeff. It, it, just, it just means that you and I have really good taste. Yes. That's what it means. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you'll find out mine later. 
But as I watched this last one, I'm kind of agreeing with this could have been my my can. first two. I mean, it was they were neck and neck. This is a really this was a really good one. So I was gonna say this is probably top three for me. Yeah. Definitely. Just because there is and as we get started, man, I don't know about a lot of people, but I really resonated not only with Mary's story of just being disconnected from God and maybe feeling low enough where Maybe no one has ever told you that you're probably demon possessed in a real way, but I have. And so, you know, when you think of the things that you maybe have done in your life or the low points where you start to doubt everything and having addiction problems and sliding back into things that you wished you didn't do that are kind of major life that people see, you know, when you have a problem like Mary has with drinking and and her chosen life, well, we went over the part about, you know, probably wasn't her chosen line of work, but the the kind of work that she was able to do at that time. And, you know, those are very visible things that people see. And it's it's really uncomfortable when you're judged for what you are. And a lot of times you're in positions where people haven't seen what has brought you to this place where you're living. And so I, I really resonated. And I'll, man, I cried like crazy the first time I saw that episode and I teared up this morning watching it again when he calls her Mary and she stops and you're like, well, you know, it's just this, you know, the hair on your arms go up and put yourself in that place. And even though we don't have Jesus in front of us today, that feeling still is there. But to be, you know, putting yourself in that position and like, what would it be like if Jesus came up and called you by your name and then hugged you? It has to be just you know, I'm, I don't know. I don't think there's words You're for kind it. Kind of losing your words. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's no, Good. there's no words for it. And it, and that part has. That's why I would say that's probably my second or third favorite episode. So I think we can all pretty much get on board with if Ken makes us have a new favorite, we can probably be okay with it. <laughs> but I liked the but now, you know, and and then going back and finding out what was the but now, and. For anyone that has felt like maybe they didn't belong or that they were just a a square peg trying to jam it into a round hole of church or of spirituality or of a Jesus that maybe we've heard of but we don't understand or we've only really seen the Old Testament God that's a little bit more difficult to, to swallow than Jesus is. But is there anything that's more meaningful when... You know, you start talking about who God really is and what he's really like and how he loves us and that he created you knowing like, yeah, I created you even though I knew. But now and you go back to chapter 42 and that seems like that that chapter that's the full of I told you so. I see you Christians that 42. Ooh, man. See, that's the God. That's how he really is. He does bad things to his own people. What kind of God does things like this? And so I thought that was pulling back that part to really show that this was God keeping his promises. That's not something I've thought about in that way before and how powerful when you're looking at it from the correct perspective, how much more meaningful that that God is proving all like proving his point. But when you're not on that side of it, how do you get to see that side and know that that's real when you haven't felt it? You've only felt the, well, here's the, here's the tribulation. Here's the, here's the, all the things pushing, seemingly pushing back against you, but you haven't found out that this is just God keeping his promises. Trapped in chapter 42. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That could be the title well, that, of a good show. That, that is actually. <laughs> that, and that's the thing, though. That's that's what God basically accuses them in 42. He says, I'm, I'm right there, but you, you won't look at me. You won't see me. I'm talking to you, but you don't acknowledge that I'm saying anything. And he says, come on. Seriously, I'm here. Listen. Yeah. Pay attention. I'm, and, and so really, I think that, you know, the work, the quote unquote work that we have to do is to listen to Jesus and to see him. That's the work. And and if you think about it, it, it's just a paying attention thing. And it's an interesting thing that for somebody who wants to see Christ, they'll see him. And for those who are like, I don't know about that, there's always a reason to not see it and to say, well, that's, mm. that's random. That's just this. It's just that. And so I think a lot of it is God saying, would you... 
I'd like you to choose to see me in, in what's happening here and to find me in, in the storm and the fire and the water um, that we talk about later on. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, going back to the, the, the film, the movie, the distraction for, for Mary on that cliff was a dove flying above her and she follows it. And so you kind of get this idea that I, I do think that even in the hardest of our lives, the hardest times of our lives, when we are at our lowest point, there is something that maybe I guess we would say it, it's intuitive, it's God given that we we want a distraction or we want something to pull us or find us, and I think that's even in our lowest lowest points. That's an interesting side to us that, you know, my name, can I hear my name? Can I see, you know, and I think there is, I think there's a, maybe it's just that part of humanity that strikes a note when, when we're even down. And so I, I do think that there is a, there's a psychology to that. You know, we, we tend to, even when we're down, even when we have this, these low, low moments of our lives, that we're still somewhat aware. Is there a, is there a small voice somewhere? Is there mm. a place somewhere to, that I, you know, because very few noises are being heard anymore. Now it's just totally inward. It's chaos. It's, it's hard. It's hard, but it's, it's, you know how, you know how you can be around a crowded room and noise all around you and you're still feeling very much alone and in a, you know, internal space. I do think that maybe that's the place where we see that interruption more so than any other time. And I've heard a lot of complaints about that scene, honestly, about people who are like, well, you know, it's insinuating that she's there to commit suicide. Yeah, I don't know if she was. I, she yeah. might have been just there to throw off the, the But, note. you know, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I have favorite places that I like to go when I'm really struggling with something or things I like to do, but a lot of times it is places. And sometimes that's getting on the motorcycle to get to that place where you can go and sit and be alone and just, like you said, listen for that voice or contemplate if there is such a thing left as that is God. Pulling yeah. Me. And I don't know if it's actually, I don't know if suicide was actually her choice. And you know, it's hard to know. Obviously this is a movie, but either way, it was it was something destructive, something self destructive by letting go of that. I was gonna, and that's what that. I was going to say. Yeah. She was giving up. Yeah, right. She was like whatever. And that's the thing. She lets go of the promise. Yeah, I am with you always. She lets. She gives up. She's like this. this it's it. It's yeah. not. You know, whatever God. That, and she was ready to drink again. Yeah. yeah, she was like, "There's nothing left." But I think it's really interesting, though, the symbolism of the fact that she had been holding on to this physical thing with yeah. words on it for so long. And what happens when she lets go of the physical thing with the words on it, then that becomes, you know, she actually comes face to face with Jesus and then that becomes part of her identity. So no longer is it just this piece of paper with a promise on it. It's embodied. You said that way better than I was going to just attempt to do it. But that's I think that's the real power is how you choose to interpret that in a, in a visual format in the show. I think when you really stop to think about what they attempted to portray, I think they did a great job. And when you start to think about those situations that I think we've all been in, to let go of something, even if that's your, you know, you get frustrated, you let go of the Bible and go, I've read that a thousand times and it doesn't mean anything to me. Or I've let go of going to church because that's just ritual and I don't need that. And then it's what Ken was talking about, God just saying, look, I'm not giving up on you. No matter if you give this up or you give that up, I'm still here. And how God chooses to interact with each one of us, to me, that makes that scene as, almost as powerful as when he actually calls her by name. And so it's, it's just one of those things that I've heard a lot of that, you know, you're taking creative license. Well, of course, <laughs> it isn't recorded. It, it's it's absolutely. But I've thought in most cases in, during the show, they've done a, a really, really good job. And there's been a ton of you can just tell there's been a ton of research, a ton of thought going into how are we going to portray this in a way maybe too for someone who's never really thought about Christianity or thought about Jesus in a way that they would understand it. And I'm, I thought I just 
thinking about that today in light of Ken's message just really brought that even closer to home. Yeah, I, I'm really glad, Ken, I'm glad you said what you said about the context of even women in that time. Yeah. That maybe all she had to hold on to were the words that she had, you know, her and her dad had rehearsed many times. And and then now that's that's gone. She's, you know, finally let go of that. And because, you know, we, and I, and I sometimes, actually I cringe a little bit when we, we clump certain, even professions, you know, we prostitution as being, this is that, you know, that horrible, that horrible woman who was a Yeah, prostitute. why would she choose that? Yeah, why would she choose that? Exactly. Yeah. I'm so glad that Dallas went down that road of this woman had very few choices. Yeah. And I, I think um, as you look at people in the, you know, people in the Bible, we always paint these pictures. This is good. This is bad. We have this binary way of thinking. And, um, and to take this story and to all of a sudden realize, and even the relapse piece is that this is life and life and Jesus comes. And I love the fact that he only comes in the last couple scenes of this show, because we realize that that life is happening all around. And here comes Jesus finally in the form of a dove first. That's the first visual we see of God is, is this dove, but then a hand mm-hmm. on a hand. And life is happening all around. Peter's life is happening. Andrew's life is happening. And it's just life. And yeah. Jesus comes. And this is a profession that, you know, it's what God abhors. God abhors that a profession. That woman, God abhors. No. That woman did not wake up every morning thinking, "Oh, yay! I get to be a, you know, a yeah. prostitute." And that was, a, you know, something that she actually chose. I, I think we need to rethink how that whole piece gets put. Well, I like it because it's something that we can all, and we've probably all at some point in our life maybe had that thought: like, man, why would anyone choose to? you know, to be this or before you understand, you know, what circumstances and maybe you're, you're not as empathetic as you you could be as you grow into that. But I think it's a good illustration that people can relate to and understand and then look inward and go, why do I do this? Why do I backslide in this piece? And to me, that's the same. It's telling the same story of me just in a different profession and a different world and a different life. But it's the inside is still telling the same story. We've all hung on to things that we thought were important and that were going to maybe bring us close to God. But in the end, it really relies on us being in, in searching out that relationship with him. Well, and so. here's my, here's, here's my, I'll, I'll insert my little tiny pet peeve. And that is we're having this conversation about Mary and her yeah. choice, whether or not she chose to work in the sex trade. She can't work in the sex trade by herself. <laughs> exactly. Like, what, there is a supply why are and we ta- Why are we not talking about all the men? Yeah. Who engaged with her in yeah. this profession that that she had to support herself, and yet we're we're talking about her and yeah, you know and we, whether we or not she you know levy it on her exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the story of all the ones that get off when the woman who's caught in adultery. In adultery, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're all like, "Wait a minute, how come she's the one in the center? Why are why are we not getting all the guys that?" Oh, that'll be something to look forward to in season four or five, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, you have anything for us? I'm sure you're listening. Yeah, let us know. Give us a sneak peek. I I'd like the camera shot to be over the shoulder though, because I'd really like to see what's being written, written in the, in the sand. sand. I don't oh. know. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> Let's see what his holy imagination produces there. (laughs) Can the show survive if he does? (laughs) Let's see. Well, and really one of the the final pieces in Ken's message that was, was short, but it was maybe as meaningful as anything was, when did God do all this? When did he make these promises? When did he, you know, he did this already knowing us. He already knew that this was going to be, he ransomed us when? While we were still sinners, while the the men and Mary were, you know, partaking in this profession and all of us with whatever our junk is. And when you add it all together, man, it was really if you've been feeling bad about, you know, yourself or your situation and and maybe where you are with God. To me, this was a like a just a really 
foundational piece to look at and and to see some someone who is just maybe just the lowest at the lowest of the lows and then to realize which God is chasing after you, how long he's been chasing after you, and that he's going to keep chasing after you. I really left feeling really, really good about Jesus and about the God that I know. And I hope other people see that same thing. Good. All right, let's get to the questions. We did have a few, and I'm not sure I did. Did we have questions at first? Yeah. Okay, so I think we answered, I got called away to uh, copier duty, and so I missed the It seems like an annual, <laughs> Oh, man, I'm weekly, telling you, uh, it's all going to get fixed this week, I promised. Um, are we having an exorcism? Of the <laughs> 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 we're going to have a driver convention. We're all going to okay. get together and install new drivers this week. Um, anyway, so the one that we I know that we answered... And you know what? I think I did have one more that I saw come in. And if I don't do it now, I will forget. And I just want to touch on it briefly. And this was asked by Matt. He said, for one to fall in agony for so long in their lives and try to find various ways to help themselves, why did it take so long for Jesus to redeem Mary? Ellie responded and said, well, when Ken was asked in Q&A why Jesus only healed Mary at the bar, and why only that one man at the pool of Bethesda? We talked about this in the high school class, and maybe he did it because they were the ones that needed it the most. They were the ones at rock bottom and had given up hope, and they just couldn't go any lower or hang on any longer. Yeah. So I feel like we've all been to that spot where you go, even if we haven't been to the lowest of the low and we can't hang on any longer, it always does feel like it takes a long time when we're in whatever we're in, we're in chapter 42 and we're just there with the oar rowing for as long as we can. And it seems like it, it takes a long time. Yeah. One of um, my favorite Christian songs, Toby Max help is on the way. Mm. I will listen to that so many times in a day, but, and one of the lyrics is he's never early, never late. Help is on the way. Never early, yeah. never late. And, for me, there's been so many times in my life where it's felt like God's been pretty late. And then when I look back later on, he was right on time. It was the, it was when I was actually ready to pay attention. To if, and I think that God had shown up earlier, and I just was I was back in chapter 42 not paying attention. You know, hmm. just being like, yeah, you're there, but I don't I don't want to see this right now. I want to do something else. And and so I think sometimes the reason it feels like God takes so long to show up is because of, of our attention, not God's intention. Oof. Yeah, I... I don't know how I feel about that question. That's an interesting one, but and, I, I don't think Jesus says at the very end in John, what is it, 17, where he says, I finished the work you gave me to do. He doesn't say, and I've healed everybody that was in my path. And, you know, and we have this idea that Jesus was supposed to just like get all the blind people together, heal them. Uh, I don't think that's, uh, matter of fact, I think as we see this, the people at the bar where Mary is and they see Jesus, I think there is more healing in, granted, Mary had a, a, a monumental thing happen in her sure, life. Sure, yeah. Not to take but away from that. But who's to yeah. say that the people in that bar didn't have monumental things happen, happen to them? them. yeah. I mean, uh, we think of healing only in terms of a physical aspect, yeah. but Jesus' purpose of being here was far more about glorification as a, than it was about uh, physical healing. Obviously, more people died and got sick and so yeah, forth. After that, after that. So, well, Matt, I would also say, hang on, because season three, episode two, is also going to take <laughs> a really nice crack at this one. And so, if you haven't seen it, uh, you know, you, we'll make sure you're prepared before that. Also time known as here. Randy's favorite. Yeah. Also known there's, as Randy's favorite. There's an interesting scene, by the way, um, for that question, and that is that if you noticed, Peter and Andrew are walking out of the bar. Yeah. When Mary goes in, or when Jesus, when apparently Jesus is going in, so it's like, oh man, Peter just missed it. He would have, you know, yeah. And then we get, you know, we get the next uh, couple of, yeah, episodes later. All right, we had some hardballs this week, and so I'm gonna go with we not we'll do the teaser last. If right. you were watching second, you will, you know what that is, but it'll be coming up. And this one came in right before. 
after church had ended and I left the chat up for a while and just in case there were any questions because I let people know kind of late before I got back in the chat that we were recording today. And Anonymous One, capital A Anonymous One said, it seems like Isaiah 42, 43 is describing an abusive relationship. I hurt you, scare you in order to show you how great I am at rescuing you. (laughs) And I personally, I mean, I don't know how to answer that necessarily, but I resonate with it because there was a time in my life when that reading that I would have said the same thing. And I would have been in a thought process that I wasn't able to see the way Ken laid out the promises. And I'm really, I'm doing everything I've told you I'm going to do. I'm, I'm keeping my covenant. I'm, I'm holding on. I'm keeping my promises but you're not listening to me. (laughs) And I don't even know if I would have heard it at that time, if I would have processed it and said, I believe that to be true. I do now I'm in a different place. And I also, I also know Ken's heart. And when Ken was putting that together and I got a chance to sit in a little bit this week during sermon prep time. And it was like, that is amazing. That is stuff that, and I don't know how, I don't know how you can convince somebody of that until maybe they're ready to, to see that part or they're ready to have that, or they've had an experience with Jesus that shows them that that's true. And I don't know for sure how, you know, anonymous one, I don't know for sure where you're at either. So I don't want to mischaracterize where you might be in your journey. Yeah. It's, it's easy to see things in the, you know, in the context that we're living in. And so um, I definitely live in a context where I see a good God because that's what I believe in. And that's that's, sure. that's where I'm at. And I can understand there's been times in my walk where I didn't really feel like God was particularly good. And so a lot of things. So I resonate. I hear what you're saying about um, it feels like an abusive relationship. It's like I'm going to do some really bad stuff to you. And then I'm going to come back and, and save, quote unquote, save you from the bad stuff that I've done to you. But. That's not what I see happening there. I see I see a God that is is watching people self destruct mm. and that tries to get in and get their attention. And um, you know, I suppose that if you were, you know, refining metal, that you would think the person who is doing the refining of the metal was pretty abusive to the metal in mm. the in the process of, of melting yeah. it down and reshaping it and getting the impurities out. And um, if you're that piece of metal, you might not be feeling particularly happy with with that refiner's fire when it's happening. So, you know, anonymous one, wherever you're at, um, what a great question. I I definitely hear an honest um, Mm -hmm. kind of searching there for for what's going on. And and all I can say is I know I don't serve an abuse of God. I know I serve a God that loves me, has my best good at heart, and that the things that happen in my life— he walks with me through that fire and walks with me through that water. And um, if that's not the experience that, that you're having as you're listening to this, you know, my prayer is that God will, God will open mm. himself up in a way yeah. that, that makes you see the love. I'm glad Ken is here to answer the question that I cannot because that was great. That was well, I don't great. know about that, but. <laughs> As I'm just like, I know, I like I said, I, I resonate, but I don't know also where, where to go with that. That was perfect. All right, Joe, I think this is Joe's first time. And Joe, I'm, I don't know if you listen to the podcast, so I hope you're listening. This is Joe from the United Kingdom who worships with us twice every week. <laughs> I love it, Joe. <laughs> and, and so Joe is like, I mean, he beats Stanley and I into the chat sometimes. Joe, as soon <laughs> as awesome. it's live, Joe is there <laughs> welcoming everyone. So I hope you're listening, Joe. Uh, Joe threw a comment in. Again, it was really well, late let's, afterwards. Well, let's just say, too, he's got a seven-hour head start. on. A well, that's chair. true. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he's already awake and ready to go. Uh, Joe takes time out of his midday. I feel like we need to do church re- retreat, <laughs> retreat near Joe, yeah. don't you think? That'd yeah. be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that won't cost anything. Eh. Joe, what do you got? You got some land for us to hang out with over there? <laughs> some good deals on airfare, maybe? Joe wants to know, if God is going to change our names when we get to heaven, how will our relatives know who we are? <laughs> I absolutely love the question. I'm like, 
Wait, so, we want our relatives to find yeah, us? Oh. Say, that's, that's like the witness protection plan. Most of, so. most of our relatives may not believe we're there. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, there's probably a few. <laughs> when they look in the phone book. That's a good point. You know, I think the cool thing is that, um, Joe, I don't know. Um, that's It's a super fair and super good question. Yeah. I just have a feeling that they will know, that, that they will... Whatever the name is and whatever it sounds like or whatever whatever's going on there, people are like, oh, yeah, that's that yeah. redheaded guy that I used to know. I just always felt like, I mean, these are things that I've often thought about even as a kid and later on, but just never never grew out of being curious as to, like, what is heaven really going to be like? And, you know, the people like, all your dogs will be there. And I'm like, you know, for some of these people, they're going to have a troop of <laughs> a pets. A couple dogs, dogs I'd go ahead and be okay with <laughs> Not showing up, <laughs> well, right? But no, no, no. These are new uh, and improved, perfect oh, beings, gotcha. and so mm-hmm. yeah. And so it's always fun. And when Joe, as soon as you typed the question, it just it brought a smile to my face. And uh, so thank you again. I don't, I don't think. Well, I know we don't know, but well, plus I just we assume don't, it's going to be great. Plus, well, when, plus, we other people aren't going to know that that new name. According to Revelation, that's true. That, that, that God Reve- gives us its. That's a good point, Melanie. Melanie yeah. Yeah. Okay, Revelation so. says that God gives us a name that no one knows but us and, and God. Oh. Yeah. Well, I've got a confession. I was in London a couple of years ago because he was, and I asked for Joe, you specifically, and they did not know where you lived. So, oh, man. So we're. Uh, what's the matter with your neighbors, bro? Oh, Come on. We're not sure where, what that, what's up with that. Who right? doesn't know where Joe is? <laughs> man, I'm sorry, Joe. We. Man, we're going to have to do better. We're going to have to do better. All right. And then the teaser question that came in from Alex that asked, what is the meaning of Jesus' new name in Revelation? And I just want to say that we have our expert in-house. Yes. <laughs> and we got up here and we sat down and we talked about this question because we want to make sure we're going to have some kind of a, a, a solid answer. So Melanie went into her magic bookcase <laughs> and brought out two <laughs> of what are thousands of... Bookcase. Oh, no. If you... Oh, yeah. She has magic bookcases. I've lifted them. I've put books in them. I <laughs> know they are real. Know. I know they are real. And she brought two of them with her into the podcast studio. So we're going to turn the time over to Melanie to let us know what is the meaning of Jesus' new name in Revelation. Well, I looked at more than two, but these are the, these are the two that I that I thought were... Um, particularly And by the way, it's worth saying, Alex, we think that you're referring to Revelation 3. Yes, Revelation 3, 12. 3, 12, where right. Jesus is talking to one of the churches in Revelation. Yeah, talking to um, the church in Philadelphia, which I think you're, you're going to be unpacking in a sermon series. Yeah, we actually, I'm really excited about that. After after we get done with The Chosen, there's going to be, a, I think, uh, our uh, Freud, who's our ch- uh, family ministries pastor, is going to have a sermon over Memorial Day, I think, and then... I think there's a Pathfinder mm-hmm. um, yeah. celebration of Sabbath, and then after that, we're going to jump into a sermon series on the churches of Revelation and the message that God has for us in them today. So yes, we'll we'll actually be unpacking this a lot further. Well, so I'll I'll just give a, a little synopsis here of some of the things that we were looking at um, that different scholars have contributed to the conversation. Uh, one is the in the Bible, when when there is a name change, that generally happens when there is a change of status, a change of occupation, a change of role. And so, what one of the scholars was suggesting was that, you know, in this in this trilogy of new names, that you know, the New Jerusalem, we receive a new name, and then um, God takes on a new name. It signals a shift in God's role toward us, God's relation with us, because now. We are God's people. God is our God. There, there's, there's no separation anymore. So that's a possibility. Another possibility is that um, we have a finite ability to understand God, <laughs> and so uh, there will be a better revelation of who God is and God's character. And a lot of times in the Bible, name. Um, the, uh, someone's name was 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 thought of as the content of their character, right? So if we have a better understanding of the character of God, then we have an, sort of an expansion of the name. Hmm. Okay. So that's that's another possibility. I'm sure there may be other possibilities, but those two stuck out. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, <laughs> ask a good question. That's why we have a, Melanie get a great answer? I like it. 
as uh, Jeff said, we would have we would have given a different answer probably. So uh, <laughs> I don't get exactly what Jeff said, but anyway, hey, I think but, it's some use out of all these yeah, books so, I've collected. I know it's an impressive collection, yeah, and so why it, not? It's you know. hauled all over the United States. <laughs> Yeah. Tim Tim has his DVDs and Melanie yep. has her has her books. books. Oh no 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 no. He has a rock collection. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah yeah. The DVDs Tim has DVDs and a rock. The collection. DVDs were easy. It was the rock collection that really made. Oh me my goodness. To okay. kind of grunt a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that was <laughs> collects a sixty pound stone from every state he's been in. So uh... <laughs> you know you he know builds an altar at each yeah. year. Okay. <laughs> This we is won't what, even go. Tim's very <laughs> biblical. <laughs> this is what happens when you invite friends yeah. to help you move. <laughs> they get to know you a lot better, don't they? Oh, shucks. <laughs> anyway, I was excited for this series, and even more so now, where, you know, I mean, essentially we took just, what, two pretty simple clips from the show. And of course, on Friday night, we watched that episode. And so if you are local or you're close, please do come on Friday night. Yeah, by the to way, be, that to be should here. be promoted. There was popcorn even. I know. Mm-hmm. So popcorn. To- popcorn. There was, uh, there were drinks for donations. So yeah. I, I put in a fairly sizable donation, just told them to give drinks to people as they came by. So. And I yeah. have to shout out to Carla too, because Carla and her, yeah. her team of youth made the popcorn. It was And fantastic. I, you know, I, I threw out, you know, like this, this dream of mine that there would be some sort of a, you know, that, that pump with the little buttery oil thing. And she said, we don't have one of those. Well, guess what? Showed up she last a, night. Yeah. She had a little pump thing <gasps> with the oil. And so, okay. yeah, she went all out. I had an out. accident with that, by the way. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, okay. I tried to, I tried to pump some into my it just it went all up and down my arm, but uh, it was delicious when I looked it off. Your, your arm is very my arm smooth had a very today, buttery right? uh, buttery taste to it. Well, you know, if, too bad you don't shave your arms. You were probably just ready for a nice close shave, you know? With the butter? Randy, uh, okay. You never shaved the sure, butter? I'm not sure about, about that juxtaposition. Thought, thought, Give it to the person that. who's barefoot in the room. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, the, popcorn uh, doesn't sound quite as good now. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yeah. So, come out. There's yeah. popcorn. There's a... It's And I think one of the other things I really enjoyed was that at the end of the um, movie, usually the person who's said it was their favorite does a little... Um, kind of just, just a little conversation with everybody who's there about about what they got out of it. And so we're able to unpack it, the episode a little bit more there. And uh, it was kind of fun. Stanley also talked to us about some things that, that you might not notice as a, as a filmmaker. One of the things that, that kind of got my, me thinking today as I was watching this these clips for the umpteenth time. And by the way, it's just crazy to me. That last clip with Mary and Jesus, oh, I just get goosebumps every single every time, time I watch it. Every, every time. Every single time. Get a little teary. And, but uh, there's this... If you watch the the service and you see the clip, one of the things to really notice is that there's this really discordant ringing uh, when Mary is yeah. is mm-hmm. in there, and when Jesus first touches her, there's this discordant, and then as soon as he touches him, there's, there's this kind of it slowly kind of comes in louder and louder. This the kind of ah oh, music kind of thing, and and you know you watch it the first time, you don't even notice it, but it completely flavors your. Sure, yeah. It, and it, t- it psychologically tells you that her life is discordant, and suddenly God's bringing harmony into back into her life, and it's just kind of... Kind Whoever of they've thing. used for the musical score um, good. has been on point through through every episode. It's I it's, love their theme song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah, whole, that's cool. Yeah. Even the, if you watch the credits in the end, it's a very simple music with a, a heavy bass beat that's just very simple, but it's... It just keeps you watching, and it's like how many people, all the names that scroll across the screen yeah. that people have given, and that's just a you know a testament to how much they've been able to do yeah. with no capital to start with, just going f- total crowdsourcing. I feel like they're crazy. doing pretty good now, though. I think they're doing very well. Yes, <laughs> they're humming. So definitely check us out Friday night. Come for the the viewing. If not, make sure you're ready next week for season one, episode four, "The Rock on Which It Is Built." I didn't see a name attached to this one as to who's... Stanley. This is Stanley? This is Stanley. So Stanley Mm -hmm. will talk to you afterwards, and you'll probably get some more filmmakers' Mm -hmm. uh, inside tips of things that happen. And so definitely join us for that. And and that's what we'll be talking about next week right here on the podcast. So I'm even more excited now because this was... This This is what Jesus wants from you. This was really fun. This episode is about what Jesus wants from you. Mm. 
All right. Well, I don't remember exactly what. For, I mean, I know I've seen it, but I don't remember exactly which one it is. So I'll have to. This is uh, to, this is the one where uh, Peter goes fishing. Fishing. Oh right. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Yeah, that's uh, a good yeah. one. It's a great one. I mean, it's hard to pick a favorite. To be honest, I mean, they're they all have like something in each episode where you're just like, oh come on. And there is activity happening all around of us. So, this is what happens when we do it on a Saturday afternoon. There's a hint. Hey, guys. Well, if you have anything else to add or share, I mean, we're going to be in this series for a little bit, and I wouldn't be opposed to going back and answering a question yeah. here or there if that happens. So 407-965-1607 or podcast at wholelife.church. But thanks for listening, guys. And yeah, I hope everybody go- had a good fourth, huh? And yeah. have a good fourth. Yeah. Well, 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 I hope this time had. they had. <laughs> oh, hands. Yeah. Yeah. Right. On a Wednesday. I'm we're tired. We sort of had like time, a, time, we had time a good travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we? we had a blast. We did. We had a blast. It was fantastic. <laughs> who's, who's buying the fireworks this year? Uncle Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should talk to Uncle Nate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. He's go. got the costume. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.